Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parent Stories. Today we have a very special episode for you, a compilation of some of the greatest Entitled Parent Stories we read over the past year. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a few hours of the most Entitled Parents you've ever heard of. And by the way, Karen assured me that if this video gets 1000 likes, she won't try to speak to anyone's manager for an entire week. So please smash that like button. And if you're new, subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. And become an official member of the ReArmy today, and I'll give you a shout out in an upcoming video. R slash Entitled Parents. Entitled Mom's Quest to Have Me Written Up Over Fortnite. So I was working at the electronics section of the store I work at, as per usual, when a kid and his mom came up to the register looking to buy the Fortnite Deep Freeze bundle for his Switch. We've gotten several complaints ever since we first got it, since kids and parents see it and just assume it comes with a physical copy of the game, since it only comes with skins, money, etc. So I always remind them of this just to save them money if they're just looking to play Fortnite. Were you just looking for Fortnite? Or were you just looking for this stuff on the box? The kid looks extremely confused, entitled Mom, giving me a look like I am a complete idiot. What are you talking about? Okay. Just so you know, this doesn't come with the game. It's just a download code for the stuff on the box. You would already need the game to get this stuff, and we've gotten a lot of complaints from parents whose kids didn't know that. Good news is it's completely free to download, so you can just install it when you get home. You can still get this if you want, I just thought I should let you know. Apparently, in her mind, that translated into me calling her kid stupid. I think that he's smart enough to know what he wants. He's top of his class! Um, okay. I'm just trying to save you some money. The game is free. Apparently, it is inconceivable to her that something could be free or that she could pay $30 and not get exactly what she wants because we kept going in this weird loop for about a minute with her getting more and more confused. Look, just shut up and give us the game! I've had enough and ring her up, deciding that if she wants to play stupid games, she can win stupid prizes. After about an hour or so after they've gone, I go to lunch, and when I come back, a coworker tells me that the entitled mom has come back, and she's upset and waiting for specifically me. Sure enough, when I get there, she's waiting for me with her kid, and the one jerk manager in the store who is bending the knee as hard as she can for the entitled mom. Apparently, they showed up right after I went to lunch and were causing a rather large scene because, of course, their game didn't work. Long story short, she explained to the jerk manager that I didn't properly explain to them what they bought wasn't an actual game, how I called her and her kids stupid, how I cheated them, etc. And now she wants her money back. This jerk manager offers her one better and tells me to apologize as well as install the game for her kid since she had brought his switch with him. So I give the most general sorry, not sorry apology and the entitled mom all too smugly hands me the switch. I find Fortnite for them to download in about 10 seconds on the Nintendo store. Of course, it's taking forever to download because we're on bad store Wi-Fi and the entire time the entitled mom is talking smack about everything from everything from my appearance to my lack of customer service skills and whatever else she feels like berating me with. The entire time this is going on, her little jerk of a kid is blasting the demo speakers at full volume, starting a new demo song every two seconds. Needless to say, I'm pretty angry and on edge from everything. I'm on the verge of crying since I can't do or say anything back since nobody is sticking up for me and this jerk manager is right there. Finally, after an eternity, it finishes and I hand the switch back and very weakly tell her it's good to go before excusing myself to go to the bathroom to try to collect myself. And of course, the entitled mom is following me to talk more smack. I finally just turn around and scream at her, tears in my eyes. God, just leave me alone. I finally get into the bathroom, which thankfully was for one person at a time and spent the next 15 minutes or so crying and trying to collect myself. Eventually I head back and jerk manager wants to talk to me. She explains that I was already in trouble for earlier, but my little outburst was going to get me written up since the entitled mom came back to the section to complain and got a bunch of coupons and gift cards. Wish I could say there was a happy ending to this one, but nope. Entitled Mom wins the day on this one. Update 1. 
First of all, thanks to everyone for their supportive comments and messages. They really made my bad day better. I'm going to HR first thing tomorrow morning to try to get this resolved and reversed. If nothing else, I'm hoping that something can be done about this manager. Hopefully I can update with good news. Update number two. Spoke to HR this morning about the situation that occurred yesterday and have some slightly confusing but hopefully good news. So I was told by HR that since the company I work for is third party, that Miss Jerk Manager technically doesn't have the authority to take disciplinary action against me. I had always assumed that she could, since we work inside of the store, but apparently not. HR tells me not to worry about it, since the write-up from yesterday doesn't really have any power over me unless my district manager approves it, or something like that. HR also let me know that they'll have a talk with the Jerk Manager since she overstepped. Hopefully the next update will be me, with me completely in the clear. Next we've got Entitled Mom Demands I Let Entitled Kid Play With the Dungeons and Dragons Miniatures I Spent Hours Painting So I've been watching a lot of Mr. Reddit and other like YouTubers. I had another encounter with an entitled mom from last year that I posted on another subreddit, but I will also post here. But this is a more recent one. I am on mobile, so sorry for any errors. Also, Mr. Reddit, you have my full permission to use this in a video if you want. Here is the cast. Me, a habitual cleric and female nerd. Store owner, who I became good friends with. Entitled mother. Entitled kid. We have nice son, who's the entitled mom's decent older son, who's about 17 and in my Dungeons and Dragons group. A rogue. Wolf, the amazing dungeon master. Kylo, my roommate and BFF slash boyfriend, the party's half-orc fighter. And Z, the party's alchemist. So, some backstory. I am a 20-year-old white female. I am also a nerd. I love Dungeons & Dragons, Star Wars, gaming, etc. If I listed everything I liked, the list would take up a whole paragraph. But I am a full-fledged nerd with a laminated 4K gold nerd card. I have played every edition of Dungeons & Dragons, although I favor 3.5, 1E, and 5E. I inherited a set of Dungeons & Dragons books from the 70s from one of my uncles. I have a set dice for each character I make. So along with me being a nerd, I also have autism spectrum disorder. My condition used to be called Asperger's, but it was changed. It is not really the severe type that most people think of when they hear autism. I struggle with communication and eye contact. I can talk and hold conversation, but it's a struggle to hold conversations in the same way other people do. I have no trouble speaking or talking, and I am very articulate. However, I struggle with figuring out how to say what I want to express and various other little quirks. I tend to trail off and to pause in sentences a lot so I can think of what I want to say. I also have severe anxiety, especially in social situations excluding conventions and Dungeons and Dragons. The autism is an important part of this story. Now, every Monday from 4 to 9 p.m., I am part of a Dungeons and Dragons group. We had started a Curse of Strad campaign and Nice Son was part of it. He is 17 and goes to my old high school. I knew him well as he was in drama club with me in his freshman year when I was a senior. He has a very controlling mom and his dad divorced her but was unable to get custody of nice son. So the poor guy is stuck with his mom who will not let him get a license or even a learner's permit. She drives him everywhere. If she doesn't want him to go somewhere, then he's darn well not going anywhere. In senior year, I was his ride everywhere as his mother would only drive him to and from school. His father is rich, so his mom lives off child support and alimony checks. She does no work at all. Our group meets at our local game store. I get there a few hours early with nice son so I can work on painting my figures. Our party consists of a tiefling druid, a half-orc fighter, an Asimar cleric, and a tabaxi rogue. I was nice son's ride because his mom didn't approve of Dungeons and Dragons. I do custom painting and sell the figures online. I had been working on some custom figures for the party. So an hour before the game started, the rest of the party was there. The door opens and Entitled Mom comes in with Entitled Kid. This woman looked like a wannabe supermodel with obvious plastic surgery and fake boobs and a spray tan. She was 45 and looked like she was 24. Her Kardashian wannabe lips gave it away. She also had that Karen haircut. She had this disgusted look on her face like the store was revolting. It was this very clean store, not very big, but the way she was looking at it, you would think it was the most disgusting place in the world. She started looking around the store when Entitled Kid ran over to me. He was about 10 years old. 
I was finishing the last figure when he spoke. Cool, I wanna play. He grabbed the half-orc fighter I had finished painting before I could stop him. I gently took it back from him. Sorry kid, these are not fully dry yet. Please don't touch them. But I wanna play. Now I was being nice, so I brought out some of my dry figures to let him touch. I made sure to tell him that they were not toys. Next thing I know, he broke the sword off one of my bandits. I take them back. No, go away. Mine. Entitled Kid started stomping his feet and throwing a temper tantrum. Now before people say I was being unreasonable, I spent hours painting each of these. This was hours of work to me. I take pride in my Dungeons and Dragons figures. So Entitled Kid's tantrum summoned Entitled Mom. I was already becoming overwhelmed from the temper tantrum as sound can easily overwhelm me. Then comes Entitled Mom in all her plastic Barbie glory. Entitled Mom grabbed a tiefling that I had and looked at it with disgust. You are giving my child this demonic filth? No, give him this one. She grabbed my masterpiece, Rhea the Asimar Cleric. I had spent hours on that figure and it was part of my personal collection. She gave it to her hellspawn of a son. Entitled Kid then started trying to bend the wings. That is part of my personal collection. I could paint some for him. They cost about $50 per figure. Now the reason I charged that price was because of the paint. It can easily get up to $200 for even just a few paints. So I charge a higher price than I get the figure for because the paint is so expensive. And I need to get a lot of different paints. Also, I paint in very high detail, so it takes a lot of time. This whole time I was not making eye contact and doing the very same behaviors I explained earlier. No, you will give him this one. It's the least you can do for corrupting my son. You're kind of... You're kind or disgusting. Why can't you just find a man? Now, as if summoned, Kylo walks over. He is my boyfriend and roommate. He grabbed my figure out of the boy's hand. Kylo says, She said that she would paint a custom one for you. You can pay her and get one if you really want one. The rest of our Dungeons and Dragons group had also come over at this point. Wolf. Look lady, we need to start our session. Could you stop harassing one of our players? I am not harassing her. She took this figure from my son. That's not true. I painted it myself. And on the verge of tears, I was shaking and feeling overwhelmed. So I pulled out this strip of fake fur I had that I used as a comforting item. The entitled kid saw this and grabbed it from me. I tried to take it back and was trying to pull it out of his hands. Leave my son alone, you cow. She has autism, you jerk, and anxiety. You and your hellspawn are overwhelming her and giving her a panic attack. That cloth is her comfort mechanism. Then why is she here? She should be supervised. Her kind can't be trusted on their own. She is fully capable of functioning on her own. No, she isn't. She is attacking my son. Look at her. This is when Nice Son finally spoke up. She is perfectly able to take care of herself. She is only acting this way because you came in here and are antagonizing her. At this point, I had gotten my comfort item back and hid in my safe space. The store owner knew about my autism and had set up a room where people with anxiety and autism could go to feel safe. It was filled with soft items and stuffed animals. I spent about an hour in there. The entitled mom eventually left. No police called or anything. Although store owner banned her from the store and Dungeons and Dragons that night was extended to 10. And our final story of the day. She is my daughter. So I thought I would post this here as it's been on my mind for a while and I still laugh at it after this long FTP LTL. You know the drill, no mobile. All spelling mistakes are my fault and I'm not going to blame autocorrect. Not sure on policy for abbreviations, so I will keep this simple. Our cast, we've got me. We've got the quiet kid who didn't actually say anything. The entitled parent, supposed parent. This will become clear soon. And the staff member. I work in a medium sized town in the UK, close to the town center as a system administrator. I have a few stories that will fit in that sub, but we'll save them for another time. Every day I go and buy my lunch from the local convenience store, five days a week. This day is not unlike the others. The clock rolls around to 1.30 p.m. and I make my way out of the building to the store to grab a bite to eat. I normally load up my travel bag with food, usual meal deal contents, and go back to my desk and eat it in the quiet, surfing on my phone, catching up with personal emails, etc. 
So I walk into the store. The usual crud is there. Old people, young people, the one odd person who likes to dress in women's dresses. Nice person, totally harmless by the way. I spot the entitled parent and the quiet kid as they are browsing the shelves. I overhear a couple sentences from the entitled parent and she sounds like your typical chaff. Yes, I'm in the UK. Think Bianca from EastEnders. She is shorter than me, long brown hair, wearing sports clothes and large hooped gold earrings. Oh yes, she is that kind of chaff. Ignoring the expletives and general foul-mouthed words emanating from this delightful human female, I grab my usual meal deal and start to browse the confectionery. M&M's or a chocolate bar today? Hmm, choices, choices. Then suddenly... What do you mean I have to show ID? I ain't got no ID. Quiet Kid isn't saying anything. Look, this is my daughter. I'm older than her. Pointing at the girl she came in with, dressed in her school uniform. Quiet Kid still isn't saying anything. Sorry, miss. I'm going to need to see some ID. You need to be at least 18 to buy cigs. UK law changed a few years ago. It's now 18. It used to be 16. Now looking at this kid, she was about 14 to 15, kitted out in her green blazer and tartan shirt. This supposed mother could not have been any older than 22 or 23, but I suspect she was a lot younger given the attitude and demeanor, 17 most likely. Yes, she may have been old enough to buy the cigs, but no ID, no cigs, simple. All I want is a pack of cigs. And for that, I'm going to have to see some ID. And I told you I ain't got no ID. This is my daughter. She is younger than me. Do I not look like I'm her mother? Well, I won't comment on that, but I will still need to see some ID. Quiet Kid is looking quite nervous now. I walk up to the till area and watch from here with my own eyes. She is creating quite a scene and lots of people in the store have started to stop what they are doing now and seeing how this plays out. Ah, you want to see a manager? Sorry for the all caps but she really was screaming every word. Okay, I will call over a manager. He rings the staff bell twice and a manager arrives, takes one look at the girl and says, no ID, no sale, and promptly walks off. He must have heard her from all the way over on the other side of the store. I bet everyone in the store could hear how loud she was. He was done with her crap before even showing up. The entitled parent then throws a major tantrum and starts flailing her hands all over the place in the air. Think family guy, flailing tube man. But I'm her mother. She is my daughter. I must be old enough to buy cigs if I've got a daughter. You will serve me now. I want to buy these. I'm old enough. The store manager stands his ground. He's not budging on this one. We all knew she was not her mother. Sister or cousin, maybe, but not her mother. I've just picked her up from school for lunch, and I have to take her back soon. You are wasting my time. I have not had a cig in hours, and I'm craving a smoke, and you are causing me to lose my mental health. Store manager looks back at her. No emotion on his face, just a cold, blank stare. He slowly shakes his head from side to side. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now, miss. You're causing a scene. All I wanted was a pack of cigs. And now you have done this to me. She is my daughter. Entitled parent walks out of the shop, screaming bad words left, right, and center. The store manager calls over the next customer, and I walk up. Well, wasn't she a polite little lady? That's her daughter, don't you know? Entitled mom thinks it's okay for her kid to play GTA, but thinks I shouldn't play Fallout. I'm on mobile, so things might come out differently than when I type them. Also, I didn't say this before, but English is my first language. This happened a few years ago at my local GameStop. My dad took me to get some games because he figured I was old enough to play violent games. I was 13 at the time and looked like I was 12. I'm 16 now and whenever I shave my pathetic excuse of a beard, I still look 12. I knew which games I wanted, Fallout 3 and New Vegas. I heard really great things about them. I went to the PS3 wall when it was still pretty big, it's just a couple of shelves on the floor now, and I went looking. I grabbed Fallout 3, Game of the Year, and New Vegas. I couldn't afford Ultimate Edition. I walked over to my dad and told him I was ready to check out. Before I went to the counter, 
He grabbed South Park, the stick of truth. This game doesn't retain to the story. Uh, he just knew I watched the show. Before I walk to the counter, this woman rushes in with her kid, who looked like he was about eight. Her kid grabs GTA 5 as if he's memorized its location on the wall. The conversation goes a little something like this. Our cast. We've got me. We've got the Karen. The entitled kid. The employee. And my dad. Hello, miss. Did you find everything all right? Yes, I did. The GameStop employee looks at the case, looks at the kid, and then looks at Entitled Mom. Miss, you do understand that this is rated M, yes? So? This game is pretty epic. It's got a lot of bad stuff in it. And that means? I'm not supposed to sell this game to you since your child is considerably young. Entitled Mom looks at me and says... Well, he's young too. You shouldn't sell him that game then. Miss, I've known these two for years now. I know that this young man is capable of playing this game. Referring to Fallout, in case some of you didn't know. Young man? You're calling this little brat a young man? He's only 11. She actually said I looked 11. I'm already a little annoyed at this point, and I just say, I'm 14. No, you are not. I know what a 14-year-old looks like. You are not 14, you little brat. I had only said two words, and I was already being called a brat. Mommy, I want to play the game. And you will. She turned towards me and took the games out of my hands and turned back to the employee. I want these games free as compensation for you harassing me and my child. Employee is clearly getting annoyed. Miss, I can't let you do that, as that's against store policy. Plus, this young man was about to check out before you rushed in here. Enough of this young man crap. He is clearly a brat who shouldn't be allowed to buy these games either. You have no right to talk to my son like that. Who the heck are you to say I shouldn't talk like that to your brat? Miss, you need to leave. Shut up and mind your own business. If anything, this brat and his father should leave. I had enough of her crap. One, don't talk about my father like that. Two, I already told you, I'm 14. Three, I had only ever said two words. Four, I'm five years older than your kid, and I've had experience with these types of games. You are the one who should leave. Entitled Mom was upset after that. She yelled at the employee more, yelled at my dad saying he wasn't a good father. She yelled at me for God knows why at this point. Entitled mom, being the land will that she was, took the cases, knocked the fixtures on the floor. She put in some real force and stormed out cases in hand. There was no receipt, so she triggered the alarms. She also proceeded to give us the bird on her way out. An entitled kid kicked me in the leg before following her out. Since the cases don't have the games in them, the employees have to put the games in if they're pre-owned. She only took empty cases. The employee gave me new cases and the games, upgraded New Vegas and South Park for no extra charge. To this day, she is still my favorite employee and she will occasionally give me discounts. Thanks for reading. Edit. I've been reading some comments and I found some good questions that I will answer. Yes, technically GameStop isn't supposed to give discounts or any free items. I went to the store that day and I was met with an entirely different crew. I guess the employees from the time of this story were fired some time after. They were pretty laid back and knew full well what was happening to the company, and I guess they didn't care anymore. I know 5 plus 8 is 13. I just tried throwing off Entitled Mom, but I don't think she even cared about what I was saying at that point. But just like most 13-year-olds would do, I said I was 14. Next up we've got... Entitled mom gets mad that she's not allowed to occupy an emergency road with a stroller. So, backstory. I work for a company that does LARP-based events, birthday parties mostly, but also quite a few company trips and other general weird events. And every year, we attend several medieval fairs as they provide excellent advertisements for the company and are a lot of fun for us crew. So my job on this medieval fair was to coordinate our archery with foam arrows and hammer and rock throwing, which was located right besides one of the three taverns on the market. 
Now, there being a tavern meant there also had to be several emergency roads, one of which leads right between my area and that of another activity of ours. So, on to the story. I was standing there teaching some kids how to use a bow and arrow, all well and good, with the emergency road being fairly packed, but that's no biggie, since should there be an emergency, the people can get moved really quite quickly. We're just not allowed to block it with anything. As the kid finishes his turn, having an absolute blast shooting arrows, I look over and notice someone from the tavern tent come walking towards me. Quite naturally, I walk towards him and apologize to the next in line that they will have to wait a moment. The guy looks displeased, to say the least, and I immediately get ready for an earful, but fortunately, not my fault. He had just spoken with the safety team and the fire road was too blocked. So I turn to look and I see the problem. The road was fairly busy, but in the middle of it all, I see a woman sitting in a camping chair with a baby stroller next to her. And based on her haircut, facial expression, and style of clothing, I began seeing a massive sign above her head with the name Karen written on it, because Lord Almighty, she looked like one. Now, with the way my area and the one next to me was made, we have a dead zone in between us, an area that can't really be used for anything and is just kind of there. So me being the smart boy that I am, I think to myself, if I move Karen over there into the dead zone, problem solved. So I go over to her and of course start off with, excuse me ma'am, entitled mom in a very snarky tone. What? Shouldn't you be doing your job and get this line done with? Well, yes, I should. But first, I need you to move with your stroller over there. I point to the dead zone. Why? I'm sitting perfectly fine here, and if I want to watch my boy when he shoots... Ma'am, you'll be perfectly capable of watching him over there. And why do I have to move? Because, ma'am, this is an emergency road, and your chair and stroller is in the way. But there isn't any emergency now, is there? No, but that doesn't matter, ma'am. The road is in case there is one. You listen here. You just do your job. Or I'll report you for harassment and get you fired. I know the man who runs this show. She didn't clarify whether she meant just our little area, where I happen to be on, very good terms with my boss, or the whole market, where I also happen to be on good terms with the people on the top. Ma'am, I don't really care who you know. I've gotten word from the safety team that strollers, chairs, and such aren't allowed in the emergency roads. This kind of talk followed for quite a while with her creating quite a scene, mentioning numerous times that she knew the boss, showrunner, director. She used a lot of different names for him. Now, what I didn't know was that one of the other crew had gotten hold of the big man himself and asked him to come down. So after maybe 10 minutes of very fruitless conversation, he arrives and he takes over for me, trying to explain to this lady that she has to move. She gets very aggressive with a change in person and threatens the big man himself with getting him fired. Now, I'd like to think I'm usually pretty good at keeping my cool, but I lost it. I begin laughing like a lunatic, and the few around me who overheard it and knew who the big man is also began laughing, which only makes Entitled Mom even more frantic, and she begins screaming. Shut up, all of you! I know the man who runs this entire market, and I'm going to get you all fired. I almost fell over myself laughing. So the big man himself asks Entitled Mom, So, who exactly is it you know? And to my surprise, she actually knows the name of the big man and says it straight to his face. So, the big man himself confirms that she claims to know him personally. And lo and behold, he just reaches for his ID. And I could see the look on her face when she realized that it was in fact him. She quickly grabbed her son, her chair, her stroller, and stormed off. Not a whole lot more happened other than a lot of laughs that evening. And our final story of the day. Woman gets angry over a $2 charge for extra cheese and overhearing a French conversation with another customer at the sub shop. Hey there, Mr. Reddit. I've been watching your videos for a while, and I finally made a Reddit account to post my story here. English is not my first language, but I am better at it than most English speakers in my area of Canada, and I'm on mobile. Now, I work at a prominent sub shop in my town, 
We have six locations in my city. I have a fair amount of stories like this, just none are as bad as this one. We easily make over 300 sandwiches in 20 or so hours on a Friday. I usually close at 3 a.m. on Fridays. This situation happened at about 2.30 a.m. Our cast. We've got the entitled woman. And me. Glorious magical elephant. Entitled woman walks up to my counter, to which I wash my hands and put on glove. Hey there, what can I get you tonight? With my best customer service voice, as I've been there eight hours already. Yes, I'd like a BLT sub on the freshest bread you have. I feel the breads and the softest is the white bread. That seems to be plain white bread, is that alright? Yes, it is. Alright, uh, is it toasted or meat heated separately? Meat heated separately. In the time I had to prep the bacon to heat, another customer walked in. He was a regular and I knew he spoke little to no English so I put my French to work while I wait for the bacon. I started to make his sandwich when I hear a throat clear of doom. I knew then I was dealing with a bad woman. I grabbed the bacon from the microwave and put it on the bread. What kind of cheese would you like tonight? I'd like shredded. As I'm putting on the cheese, she starts laying into me about not speaking English to the customer when I clearly know English. Now... Why the heck would you not speak English to someone when you clearly know it? Because the gentleman barely speaks English, but he speaks French, and I'm born French, so I speak to him in a language that is most comfortable to him. Entitled woman looks at the amount of cheese on the sandwich and demands I put more. I then informed her about the extra cost that comes with it, and she says it was fine, so I added on. Well, he should learn English then, living in Canada. She turned to him and started telling him to get back to France and using old French insults, which insult me as well. Ma'am, I'd like to please ask you to not harass my customers. Now, what would you like on your sandwich? The entitled woman tells me what she wanted and I comply. Why are you defending him? You are clearly English. You just learned French throughout school. You're not truly French. I'm just trying to make sure no bad situations occur as well as I was born into the language. I start ringing her up, and the total is 11.05. What? It was 9.05 last time. Why the heck is it more expensive? The extra cheese charge is $2, ma'am. I had told you about it, and you had agreed to it. You never told me that. Why would I ever agree to that? She started to scream at me loudly. I wanted to scream back, but knew I couldn't, lest I face the HR department. Ma'am, will it be debit, credit, or cash? She pays and leaves. I come in the next day to my manager and assistant manager waiting for me. They had a write-up written out for me. They explained that the lady called in the morning to complain about harassment and discrimination and me being rude. I told them what happened and told them to check the cameras. Thankfully, the audio proves my case. The entitled woman had gotten the refund for her troubles and I'm told it's not the first time this happened. Needless to say, it never happened again. I'm still stupefied that this happened to me that late at night. Anyways, thanks for listening everyone. And thank you Mr. Reddit for making my workday shorter than normal. And you may use this in a video. Just message me to let me know when the video is. My son deserves to be allowed to sing here. What's up fellow Redditors? So for the past year, I have been going to a karaoke bar in the city. I mostly go alone and sit by myself, but I know one of the co-owners, the manager, and a few of the staff. I go almost every week, whether it was a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. While I do have issues with people, still due to my anxiety, since my first entitled parent encounter, I developed an intolerance towards stupid and stuck-up people, so I had tendencies to lash out now when confronted by such a person. Sometimes I'll end up having an attack afterwards, or I end up having a very strong drink when I have access to it. Cast. We've got Karen, the stuck-up jerk. We've got Tal, 14-year-old brat. We've got Jack, awesome manager. Mike, very nice co-owner. And me, mystical elf from another world. Now... On with the story. So, I'm at a karaoke bar in the city. I had been there since they opened at 8.30pm. 
I was there alone like I often was, and I was fine as I knew a few people who worked there and one of the co-owners, so my anxiety never really flared up while I was in the crowded bar. It was just coming up to 9.30pm when I got a call from my sister, so I went out front. After being on the phone for a few minutes, my sister and I ended the call and as I hung up, a woman, 30 to 40 years old, and her son, clearly not old enough to be in a bar, came around the corner and headed to the door of the bar where a man was standing and checking IDs. That man was Jack the manager. Now the legal drinking age in Australia is 18. With karaoke bars and clubs, no one under 18 is allowed in, even if they are with a parent. It's different if it's a restaurant with a bar like Sizzler's. I leaned against the wall and watched the two of them for a moment before deciding to head in as it was a cold night, but rather warm inside the bar. The woman and her son got to the door and the interactions are as followed. Karen walks up to the door. Jack, may I please see your ID? Karen says nothing and shows Jack her ID. Jack smiles and hands her back her ID. Thank you, ma'am. Karen smiles curtly and walks inside. Tal goes to follow his mother. Jack stops him and asks for his ID. I don't have one. I'm 14. Well then, I'm afraid I can't let you in. I'm with my mother, so it's fine. Now I could already tell from what the boy said that it was about to hit the fan and quickly. So I decided to head to the door to go inside and away from the drama. As I got to the door, Karen appeared again. Tal, what's taking you so long? He, points at Jack, won't let me in. Karen tells Jack, why won't you let my son in? It's a karaoke bar. It's a licensed premises that serves alcohol. As it is not a restaurant, I cannot allow anyone under the age of 18 or without ID to enter. He's with me, so it's fine. No, it isn't. He's not old enough. He can't come into the bar. Tal starts whining like a child. Mommy, I want to sing. Yes, he dragged out the word sing. You will, honey. By this time, I was getting really cold, so I made my way through the door, nodding at Jack as I passed him, only to be grabbed by my arm and spun around by Karen. Why is she allowed in and not my son? She's clearly not 18 or older. I'm 21 with short hair that makes me look older, but sometimes the way I dress makes me look younger, and in this case, I was wearing a dress that flows a lot when you spin. Ma'am, I am 21, and can you please let go of my arm? Ma'am, she is here every week, and she always has her ID on her in case liquor and gaming show up and card everyone. Boo crap! She doesn't even have a bag with her! Me starting to panic a bit. It's inside. Ma, it's cold out here. I want to go inside and see. Look what you've done. My poor baby is freezing because you won't let him in. I am married to the owner of this bar. Let my son in. Jack and I looked at each other, which seemed to really upset Karen even more. Quit staring at each other and let my son in. Jack smiles softly. How about I message your husband to come outside my husband is at home he doesn't come here until tomorrow i smirk that's funny because both owners are here tonight my anxiety had subsided for a moment i know for a fact you are not married to either of them since one is single and i met the other one's wife two weeks ago i am married to the owner she's screeching like a baby who's lost its pacifier Jack messages one of the owners to come outside. While Karen was screeching and her son whining, one of the co-owners came outside. Mike says, Jack, OP, what's going on? This lady wants me to allow her son into the bar despite him being only 14. She then proceeded to stop OP from entering the bar, despite being told she's been here for an hour and is 21. That's a lie. I am married to the owner. I will get you fired. Ma'am, I am a co-owner of this bar, and I'm not married to you, and neither is the other co-owner. Bull crap! I am calling the police about this. This is discrimination. 
I had had enough with Karen and her son, so I ignored my rising anxiety and I got right in Karen's face. I speak with a menacing tone. Listen here, you entitled jerk. You do not own this bar. I have been coming here every week for the past year and not once have I seen you. I also told you how I met his, point at Mike, wife two weeks ago. I know both owners and you are not married to either of them. If you want to call the cops, then go ahead. All three of us will say how you have been harassing us and trying to get your kid into a bar. It's illegal for anyone to enter a licensed premises if it's not a restaurant. Plus, there is also security cameras with audio. So it would be your best intention to turn around and leave. This crap might work in other places where the owners aren't always around and their spouses don't show up, but it won't work here. Jack and Mike were surprised, as they knew I had anxiety and hated confrontation, but I was cold and wanted to go inside, and this jerk was preventing me from doing so. Karen was about to say something when her son tugged on her arm and she looked at him. Her son had wet his pants from the tone of voice I was using. Karen looked back at me and she grabbed her son's arm and ran off, dragging him behind her. After that, I went inside and ordered a very strong drink as my anxiety had shot through the roof and I was near panic attack. No one got arrested or tasered and injured. Sorry, fellow Redditors. Next, we've got Entitled Vegan Parents Call Cops for a Messed Up Fast Food Order. Hey, I've been watching your YouTube channel about entitled parents and thought I'd give my story. Here it is. So a bit of background. I am new law enforcement officer at my agency, and it's my first month out on my own. It was near the end of my 12-hour shift, and it was a busy day, lots of reports and calls. So my dispatch sends out a call to local fast food Mexican place about a woman who was calling to have a cop show up. It wasn't in my area, but I was the closest unit, so I picked it up. Boy, did I regret it. I arrive on scene, and I met everyone involved. We've got entitled mom, innocent kid who looks in her mid-teens, and manager. Entitled mom and entitled kid are waiting in the dining area with the manager by the counter. Hello, ma'am. I'm OP, and you called to speak to law enforcement? Entitled mom cuts me off. About time you show up. I demand that you arrest the manager of this place. I'm very confused. Okay, well, what did he do to you? He tried to poison my daughter, and he won't give me a refund. <laughs> How did he try to poison your daughter? We are vegans, and this man put meat in her food, and when I demanded a refund, he refused. I want him arrested now. So I go to the manager and start to speak to him about what happened. So, what happened today? Manager says, Entitled mom comes in and orders a meal. And yes, her daughter got the wrong meal. Entitled mom goes ballistic and approaches the counter and starts cussing out my employees and then throws food on the wall. When I offered to replace the meal, she called me a mean name and called you guys. I look over the manager's shoulder and there is food on the wall from where she threw it. Now, the problem is I cannot make the restaurant give her money back and this is a civil issue, so I have no legal authority on the matter. So I go back to my patrol car and I get the corporate number for the restaurant. I then go to talk to entitled mom who was talking to innocent kid about how mommy was going to take care of everything. Ma'am, here is the number to the corporate office as this is a civil matter. I have no legal authority to force a private business to do anything and the manager did not commit any crime. What? Did your simple high school education brain not hear me? He tried to poison my daughter. Arrest him. I had to take a step back because at this point she was screaming in my face. Innocent kid buries her head in her arms as she was bright red. Ma'am, he mistakenly gave you the wrong order, attempted to fix it, and you refused to accept it. Your dietary preference was violated, but there was no attempt to poison your daughter. I want to speak to your supervisor. At this point, I put out on the radio for my supervisor, but they are busy with shift change. I look at the manager who walked up to me with that I am tired of this lady crap look on his face. I would very much like this lady to leave. I can trespass her if you like. 
The manager smiles and says yes. My supervisor arrives on scene a little while later, and I explained what was happening and what the manager wanted. So my supervisor walks to Entitled Mom and speaks to her. He comes back over to me, holding back laughter. He told me that Entitled Mom said that I was unprofessional, cussed at her, and called her a vegan jerk, and asked for my information so that she can file a formal complaint against me. I guess Entitled Mom didn't realize the big black box in the center of my uniform was a body camera, and my supervisor knew me from our time together in the military, so he knew she was full of it. So the manager filled out the paperwork to have her trespassed from the property. My supervisor let me tell her. Ma'am, as I said before, this is a civil matter, but you have been trespassed from this property, and you must leave, or you will be subject to arrest. I am tax-paying citizen of this country. That stupid jerk is probably illegal. You should be arresting him. I am going to have your badge for this. Now, what happened next is what makes this story crazy. Innocent kid who has been silent this whole time stands up and speaks. Mom, cut the crap. You eat meat and we all know it. Just stop it. You're making it way worse than what it needs to be. All of us were in complete disbelief at what innocent kid said. An entitled mom turned bright red and walked out of the restaurant. Innocent kid following her. The restaurant manager thanked us, and I finally got to go home, after surviving my first encounter with a Karen. And our final story of the day, Entitled Granny Gets Whole Bus Angry. Hey Mr. Reddit, long time lurker, first time poster here. English isn't my first language, so I apologize for any grammar errors that may occur. Our cast, we've got me, yours truly. We've got Karen. We've got H, the equally entitled husband of Karen. We have the bus driver, the nice angry woman, and the other woman, plus some other passengers. Today I had my first encounter with a real Karen. I was going on the bus at Main Station and it was already pretty full. Now, it was a bigger bus with a lot of emergency seats for elderly people with rollators, but there was already one older woman with one of those and a woman with a big stroller. Karen got on the bus with another elderly man, which I assume was her husband. She immediately sat on the seat right next to the door, putting her rollator in front of her, so the whole place was blocked now because in front of that stood the stroller. There was another elderly woman with a rollator coming in and another woman with a smaller stroller behind her. The following, roughly translated, conversation follows. Can you please move seats so I can sit as well? No. You can move seats. She clearly couldn't, because there wasn't enough room. Just fold your thing. It's not foldable. Please move your seat. I can't get through. I'm gonna get out the next stop. I'm not moving. At this point, everyone is already annoyed, including me, because it was really hot and crammed, and we just wanted to leave. Nice woman says, Move your dang seat, missy. You're not alone on this bus. No, I have to get out at the next station. She can move. Bus driver says, Ma'am, you have to move. Other people can't get in. Pointing to the lady with the smaller stroller standing outside. Yeah, so? I don't care. I won't move. I have to get out next stop. All right, we're staying here then. At this point, everyone is really upset. Just move. Are we in kindergarten? What's your problem? I don't care. I won't move. Nope. She just seemed to have developed into some sort of two-year-old with delusional syndrome. Nice woman snaps, gets up and storms towards Karen, grabs the other woman's rollator and just pulls it over and sits it down so other woman can then move to the other free seat available. What the heck is wrong with you? Stomps back to her seat and sits back down. Some people are so entitled, I can't even comprehend. The other woman with the stroller finally gets in and the bus takes off. Karen keeps laughing to her husband about how, Oh, that woman has nothing to say in her house, so she used the opportunity to speak up to us. <laughs> she didn't recognize in the slightest she might have been in the wrong here. Neither did he. I wish there was a sweet revenge ending on this, but they just got out the next stop 
and I hopefully will never see them again. Entitled Mom shows up almost four hours late on a school night, doesn't even pay me for the hours we agreed upon. So this is my first post on this subreddit, but it isn't my first entitled person story. Obligatory, not on mobile. English is my first language, and I don't really care about grammatical errors unless they're really bad, so I most likely won't edit. Some backstory. I've been babysitting since I was about 12 years old. I've been a summertime nanny before I got a job at the restaurant I work at now, and I love being around kids. Up until this point, I hadn't had to stop watching any particular child. Usually, I would cease my services when children got old enough to be left home alone. I was a junior in high school when this happened, and I knew the boys and entitled mom really well beforehand, or so I thought, so I had no issue watching the children. They were very sweet, polite, and well-behaved boys, and I never had any odd feelings towards the parents up until this point. So when the boy's mother asked me if I was free to babysit them, I was like, sure, why not? About two days before I went to babysit, I did all of my usual, first time working for this family things. Are there any allergies? From when to when will I be watching them? Are you comfortable with the pay rate we agreed upon still? Do any of them need medication? Everything was normal. The plan was I was going to be babysitting from 4 p.m. after school until 9 p.m. that evening. Feed the boys, get them in the PJs, make sure they use the bathroom before bed, and I would get paid when the parents got home from their dinner party. $5 per kid, two boys, per hour, for a total of $50 when they arrive. Keep that in mind. The night I'm supposed to babysit comes around. It's a fairly normal experience. The boys were, as they always were during church, well-behaved and respectful. They stayed out of trouble while I made dinner. They weren't fussy, went to bed after a story and a few lullabies. Everything was great. I then had two hours to do my homework. Great. Well, 8.30 rolls around, and the entitled mom texts me that they're going to be about 30 minutes late, as the party ended at 9 instead of 8.30. I'm like, eh, that's fine. And I text my dad, and he says it's fine, so I go back to homework. Now, me having no concept of time, unless I'm really paying attention, I didn't notice when 9.30 passes and it hits 10.30. My dad calls, concerned because I'm not home yet. I'm concerned too, because entitled mom told me that she would be home only half an hour late, not an hour. So I tell him I'll check in. I text her and I get no reply. I try to call and I end up having to leave a voicemail. I wasn't left a number for the father, whom I hadn't met at all before this because he often traveled for work, because his phone was broken at the time and he couldn't receive or send calls. So I was stuck there until the couple got back. I called my dad and let him know the situation, and he said that if she didn't get back to me by midnight to call the police, I thought that was a bit excessive, but nonetheless, I agreed. 11 o'clock. I text her again. No response. Call again. Rings until voicemail, and I leave another one, still trying to be polite, but add a bit of urgency, as it is a school night and my dad expects me home. 11.30 hits, and I text her again. This time, I get a response. We're on our way now. Don't worry. We'll be there in 15 minutes. So, I'm relieved. I text my dad, and he just tells me that he'll wait up for me. I start packing up my stuff because I finished my homework. I check on the boys to make sure they're asleep, but well, one more time, and I'm prepared to go as soon as they walk in the door. 11.45, they don't show up. I'm a bit annoyed now but I give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe there was traffic. Midnight. Still aren't there. I text her again, but this time I'm not polite at all. Entitled mom, I need to go home. My dad is worried and wants me home. I have school tomorrow and a physics test. When will you be here? No response. I put my stuff by the front door and text my dad again. He's annoyed and tells me that if she doesn't show up by 1 a.m., then he's coming over to watch the boys so I can go home to bed. 12.30, I get a text. We'll be home in just a few. We got hung up. 12.45, the couple gets home. I text my dad that they're home 
and he says that he expects me home ASAP. Entitled mom comes in with her husband, and neither of them look like they were in a rush. I was visibly annoyed, and the husband looked extremely confused by this. This is also the first time he has met me, and he thought I'd be older. Thank you for watching the boys. She hands me an envelope, and I look inside to see $40. Um, I don't want to be rude, entitled mom, but you owe me more than this. We agreed on 40 right? No, 50 $5 per kid per hour. This is when the husband chimes in. Honey, we're really underpaying her then. He looked like he was doing the math in his head. No, we agreed upon this, so this is what you're getting. Now, I was stunned at this point. Up until now, Entitled Mom had never shown any signs of entitlement. After years of being around an alcoholic mother, I knew the difference between drunk and sober, and Entitled Mom was completely sober, so I was extremely confused. Honey, when did you tell her we'd be home? 1 a.m. I can't hide my shock, but Entitled Mom is already shooting me out the door. I'm stunned as I'm pushed with my stuff into the driveway and given a swift good night. I look at the contents in the envelope, and I am extremely angry by this. I text my dad that I'm on my way home, and I start to get into my car to leave, until the husband comes out. How much do I owe you? Technically, almost 60, but it's fine. No, no, take this. He hands me two 20s. I'm sorry about her. She told me she had had a sitter for the entire night. I thought you were a college student. That was unfair. Drive home safe. I'll pay you the rest this weekend at church. True to his word, he gave me the last 20 he owed me, as well as a bit of extra for the troubles. This happened two more times before I refused to watch their boys anymore. I still see the boys at church, and I love them to death, but I couldn't keep doing this as a high school student, and the boys thankfully understood. Edit. So this blew up way more than I expected. A lot of people are asking why I let it happen two more times. When babysitting, I have a three-strike policy for both parents and children. For example, I no longer nanny for one family because the child would never listen to discipline and attacked me if I tried to. The other two times for this entitled mom were during the day and the husband always paid me $20 extra after paying me what my rate was. They were very well-behaved kids and they really liked me as a sitter. Each time I go to church, the boys always want to sit with me because they miss me. I almost threw out my three-strike policy for these boys because I knew I would never have a more well-behaved duo. They never threw tantrums and never gave me a hard time about anything, so I kept them until I just felt I couldn't the third time. Next we've got Entitled Mom Tries to Steal My Birthday Cake Almost Ruins My Party Hey Mr. Reddit, long-time viewer here. Now, I've been a listener for a long time and honestly never expected to have any experiences with entitled parents. That is, until a few days ago. It was my birthday, so to celebrate, I invited some friends over and we partied in my backyard. Now, we're all teenagers, so it was no surprise that we were being extraordinarily loud. I guess our talking and laughing was what summoned Entitled Kid. As my friends and I are having a good time, I notice Entitled Kid looking at us from over the fence. He's just a little kid, no older than 7 or 8. He's been my neighbor for a really long time. I even remember the day his parents came home from the hospital. I held him as a newborn and everything. He and his family are usually very nice, so I'm still confused as to why they acted like this. What are you doing? I heard Entitled Kid call from the fence. It's a party for my birthday, I responded. He's a kid. He's curious. I didn't think anything until he spoke again. Can I join? I was planning on saying no right off the bat to him. I mean, we're a bunch of teenagers. A little kid shouldn't be hanging out with us. Plus, I honestly just didn't want him to be there. But my friends had all taken notice at that point and, not wanting to look like a jerk, reluctantly agreed. Entitled Kid came running around the fence and joined in. My friends all humored him, as nice people do. I then noticed his mother, Entitled Mom, was now watching us from the same spot her son did. Probably to make sure he's alright, I figured. Everything was fairly normal until my mom brought out the cake. Fluffy and covered in bright colors, every little kid's dream. So everyone is singing happy birthday to me when all of a sudden 
entitled Kid Pipes Up. Can I cut the cake? My mom looked rather surprised at seeing Entitled Kid, and I don't blame her. Entitled Kid, I think you're a bit young to cut it. Also, it's an ice cream cake, so it'd be hard to cut, my mom explained. I thought that would be the end of it, but no. But I want to cut it. Entitled Kid was now stomping his foot and whining, the start of a full-blown temper tantrum. My friends and I looked at each other, unsure of what to do, when I heard the voice of Entitled Mom, who had been watching the situation this whole time. Just let him cut it. It's no big deal, she said. I almost thought I didn't hear right. This mother was going to let her very young son, who was still throwing a fit, I may add, cut a very frozen cake? And she wasn't suggesting he do it with an adult. She thought letting him do this alone was a perfectly acceptable concept. It's fine, I I'll just cut it, my mom insisted, clearly trying to defuse the situation. Entitled mom immediately perked up at the aspect of someone telling her child no. I was distracted as my mom brought the cake into the house and I didn't see Entitled Mom come around the fence into our backyard. Entitled Kid ran to Entitled Mom, now full on sobbing. Mommy, I want the cake, he cried. First he wanted to cut it, now he just wanted a slice. What was with this kid? It's alright, you'll get cake, Entitled Mom assured him. Now, while my mom was in the house, Entitled Mom set her sights on me. Why are you being so rude to Entitled Kid? He's just trying to enjoy the party, and you rude teenagers are excluding him. Entitled Mom, we have not been excluding him at all. My mom just doesn't want him to cut my cake. It's really not a big deal, I tried to explain. Bad choice of words. Why shouldn't he be allowed to cut it? He's just trying to be helpful, and you're being very selfish. Whoa, alright lady. You're in my backyard, getting angry over something very stupid, and now yelling at a 16-year-old? I'm not being selfish. You're just creating a dramatic situation that was stupid to begin with. He's not going to cut it, and if you don't stop this right now, he's not even going to get a piece. At this point, my mom came out of the house holding several plates of cake slices. And may I add, there were only enough plates for me and my friends, not entitled kid. Entitled Mom looked absolutely furious at my words. How dare you talk to me like that? You should be ashamed of yourself. Why don't I just take the whole cake, seeing as you're far too spoiled for it? Entitled Mom was shouting now. Try to take my cake. Just try. The second you step foot in my house, I'm calling the cops. I snapped back at her. You don't deserve that cake, Entitled Mom yelled. An Entitled Kid does? It's not even his birthday. I think the two of you should leave. You're being very rude to my daughter, my mom said from the back in the low tone I knew all too well growing up. Entitled mom looked at all the staring faces and must have known she was outnumbered. She nudged Entitled Kid out of the yard, not before suddenly sprinting to where the cake slices were placed and grabbing as many as she could hold. My mom was standing right there, so she clearly tried to stop her. Entitled Mom was shrieking, and my mom was screaming at her to get out. My friends and I were absolutely horrified. Get out! Get out now! Or so help me, I will make sure you will rot in prison! My mom yelled. This must have scared her, because the next thing I saw was Entitled Mom making a beeline to leave our yard. The good news was Entitled Mom didn't manage to get away with my cake. The bad news was most of the slices were now on the ground. My friends, bless them, all helped clean up the mess and made sure I got to enjoy one of the remaining slices. My mom got out new pieces for them and we all enjoyed my cake. We laughed pretty hard about the situation for the rest of the party. The next day, while I was cleaning up, I saw Entitled Mom in her yard. She tried calling my name several times, but I just ignored her. I mean, after an idiotic stunt like that, could you blame me? This was a few days ago and now I avoid any and all confrontation with my neighbors. Like I said, they used to be very pleasant people, so it's a bit sad that they ruined it all by acting so entitled. Next we've got 
Why aren't you watching your baby cousins? I don't care that they aren't your kids. Be more responsible. Hey, Mr. Reddit. I decided to post a second story because I love you that much. Please enjoy the antics of my crazy entitled aunt. As she is my aunt and we are not estranged, I have hundreds of similar stories that I could share about her. I decided to pick out the most satisfying, the ones where her bull was called out. Unfortunately, most of my interactions with her didn't end so well, especially when I was younger. So, a little backstory. I come from a large family on my father's side. He had six siblings, five of which were sisters. As a middle child and the only son to have children, my aunts kind of saw me and my sister as the property of all the family. We grew up as the only cousins who were routinely disciplined by every aunt. There's a ton of emotional baggage there, but that's not really what this story is about. Long story short, my sister and I do not have a good relationship with our aunts, especially me. I tended to be the black sheep of my family. I was a shy, socially awkward tomboy who was a bit of a mommy's girl. I also was a huge crybaby when I was little, which didn't help me winning over any of my very strict aunts. By the time these stories start, I am no longer a kid. Although, with how my aunts treat me, you may think otherwise. I am 18, and in my first year of college by this point, I had just reached the age where I started to stand up for myself more. Although, admittedly, my aunts still terrified me. I would just freeze up and not know what to say when they started yelling, no matter how unjust the accusation. Enter Entitled Aunt. She is my oldest aunt, second only to my uncle. I think this is part of the reason why she struts around my grandma's house like a mother hen. She's single, never married, but was a first grade teacher for several decades. At this point, she was retired, free to rule over my grandparents until they passed away. Although it may already be obvious, me and this aunt never really got along. There was only one aunt that I fought with more, but as I mentioned before, those are more painful and not really good stories to share. This aunt of mine was a brazen idiot. I had known that about her since I was a kid. While I was still scared of her, the fear was a little less with the knowledge of how stupid she was. She did not like me. I'm actually not sure why, as I was probably everything she claimed to adore in students. I was studious, hardworking, loved to read, and desperate to please. However, she decided to hate me from a young age. If anything would go wrong, it was always my fault. If the cousins broke something, it was my fault. If we played music too loud, my fault. Played video games too long, my fault. If we all decided to jump in the pool right after Entitled Aunt told us not to, you get the idea. She took the stance that the oldest needed to take responsibility for all the other kids. I was not the oldest cousin, but I was the oldest female cousin. So that's the only thing I can think of as to why I was often singled out. So back to the story. My grandparents had a house in Florida that we'd often have big family get-togethers at. At this point in my life, even my cousins had kids. The kids in this story happened to be my youngest cousin and my second cousin, cousin's kid, respectfully. We will call them boy cousin and girl cousin. We've got entitled aunt and we've got me. I was sitting in the living room watching TV when boy cousin and girl cousin decided to play chase through the house. The house layout kind of goes in a giant circle, so it's pretty easy to run a track around the place. I know I used to. They are both about two to three years old and little terrors in their own right. I would babysit girl cousin from time to time. That's going to be important. But at this point, as their parents were somewhere in the house, I didn't give a hoot what they did. I did call out at one point, hey, slow down, you're going to get hurt. But admittedly, I didn't take my eyes off the TV. As I said before, not my kids, parents in the other room, did not care. Few seconds later, crash, bam, cue wailing kids. I warned them. I kind of chuckled to myself, but since they wrecked in the other room where all the ants were stationed, I figured there was no reason to be concerned with what happened. It sounded like they had just run smack into each other, which turns out to be exactly what they did. Not more than five seconds later, 
in stomps entitled Aunt, dragging my sobbing cousin behind her. Oh, I should also mention that my cousin is the entitled aunt's godchild, and according to my aunt, can do nothing wrong. That will come up as well. Entitled aunt stands in front of the TV, blocking my view. Well? Tapping her foot. I look between her and my sobbing cousin, who is sporting a lovely lump on her head. Uh... You want to apologize to Entitled Cousin? For what? For what? For not watching her. Excuse me? Excuse you? Excuse me? You were supposed to be watching your cousin. You are the oldest. You're how old now? Why can't you be more responsible? Um, isn't her mom in the other room? Yes. So? Shouldn't her mom be taking care of her? You were right here, doing nothing. Why couldn't you take care of her? Cousin at this point breaks from Entitled Aunt's arms and crawls up into my lap. She's still crying because her head hurts, but mostly I think she just wants to watch TV and take a nap. I give her a hug and go back to trying to watch TV through my screeching aunt, assuming she'll run out of battery soon enough. Look, Entitled Aunt, her mom is in the other room. What did you want me to do? Throw myself in between them? Entitled Aunt scoffs. You saw them running around. You could have told them to stop. I did. You didn't try hard enough. They were running right through the room all of you were in. Why didn't you stop them? At this point, my aunt's face screws up real ugly as she realizes she doesn't have a leg to stand on anymore. But not being one to ever apologize, she simply marches off, grumbling how she still held me responsible. As she walked off, I got a little jolt of bravery and shouted back at her, I didn't realize I was on call duty for babysitting at all times. You guys really don't pay me enough. Technically, they didn't pay me at all. I don't know if my aunt heard me, and I don't care. And our final story of the day. Entitled Stepmother Hijacks My Birthday. Again. Short time lurker, first time posting. But I've been listening to a lot of r slashes, especially you, r slash Mr. Reddit, on YouTube, and I thought that I'd make a post of my own. English is my first language, so please let me know if something's spelled wrong. This story's not that long, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. Some background for context. This story happened in 2016, right after I graduated high school, but before I started college. I had a similar situation happen the year before with the same person, but that's a story for another time. Unfortunately for me, the entitled parent in this story is my stepmother. She's an entitled person in general, but especially so when it comes to her kids and herself, especially herself. But this time, the story's about her, not my step-siblings, who are all actually really chill. Cast, we've got me. We've got my dad. I'll call him Pops for some flair. My little brother, Mikey. And my stepmother, Jenny. So I live pretty far away from my dad, about 11 states, give or take, which means I don't get to see him that often. My little brother and I would go to stay with him every summer since he and our mom split. We'd get to see our older sister and brother too, but they weren't there for this. My sister had moved out at this point and my older brother had moved in with our mom because of issues between him, Jenny, and Pops, and he hasn't seen them since. Mikey and I went to stay with him over the summer, like usual, and we were having fun. We'd go to the neighborhood pool with our stepsister, play with our stepnephew, binge anime with our stepsister and her friend, play board games with everyone, go out to see movies, all that fun stuff. Lucky for me, my birthday is in the middle of the summer, so I got to spend it with Pops. I never wanted anything big for my birthday, just to spend it with my family and have fun. Cheesy, I know but I've always been like that. So this year, I asked Pops if we could go to the museum, and he agreed. I was so excited. I love museums, and I've only been to one other before. I don't remember the exact date we went, just that it was before my actual birthday. But Mikey, Pops, Jenny, and I all piled into the car and left. The drive was fun. We played a game guessing the name and artist of a song that was playing on the radio. 
Whoever got it first would get two points. It took a little while to get there. Pops lived pretty far north in the state, and the museum we were going to was near the state capital. But I was still just as excited about it, regardless of the lengthy drive. The museum we went to wasn't that big, as there were only three sections, and it was definitely cheap, but I didn't mind. I don't remember for sure what the first section was about, state history maybe, but I remember the second was about rocks, my favorite, and the third was about technology, specifically transportation and rockets throughout the years. So, the four of us were exploring the rocks section. I was taking my time looking at all the rocks, and I hear Pops on the phone. I think it was a coworker because Pops was talking about work stuff. I checked out of the conversation and walked away to check out some petrified wood. I only remember it was this because it was as big as me. After a minute or so of looking at it, I went to find Pops so I could show him the petrified wood. He was with Jenny, still on the phone when I spotted him, but he's not talking about work things anymore. He's talking about where he is. I hear the tail end of him saying that he took his daughter, for sure, me, to the museum for her birthday and I decided to wait for him to hang up before grabbing him. Jenny seems to have the same idea, but no patience for it, because she grabs his arm and pulls him towards another exhibit while saying that it's for her birthday too. Now, I'm used to sharing my birthday. I've shared celebrations with my cousin and uncle for as long as I can remember. Our birthdays are only a few days apart, so we'd do one big party for all of us. I had to share it with my little brother a few years prior to this, even though his birthday's in November, because my parents spoiled him, and I couldn't do or get anything without him getting it, too, because it wouldn't be fair. I can say that none of my birthdays have been 100% about me, and that was fine. I was used to it. But this was different. Jenny was an adult. She was making my birthday, the last one I would spend with my dad for a while, about her. Sadly, I expected it at this point. She always had to be the center of attention, and I didn't feel like being yelled at for being selfish, so I just walked away to enjoy what I could with Mikey while she went out of her way to keep Pops' attention. After a while, Pops decided it was time to leave. As we were heading out, I decided that I wanted to go to the gift shop and see what they had, so we stopped there. I was once again looking at the rocks and I asked Pops if I could get one of the Tiger Eye Jaspers. It was no more than five bucks, but he said no. I shrugged, disappointed but unsurprised. Pops is pretty cheap, and turned to leave. Jenny walked up, holding something. I don't remember what it was, just that it was expensive, and asked Pops if he would get it. Pops hesitated, but when Jenny reminded him it was her birthday present, he agreed. I didn't say anything. I like to avoid confrontation, and I knew this would be a waste of breath, but I did roll my eyes and walk with Mikey to the exit as they paid. And that's it. Not a very satisfying ending, but I know how Jenny can be. On a good day, she's a jerk. And I didn't want her taking out her anger on me or my brother, who she would target way more often. And honestly, that's one of the milder things she's done, and I was used to it at this point. I have a few other stories with her, and my older brother definitely has some too. If anyone wants to hear about those, she's always aggressively targeted my siblings more than me. I also have plenty of stories about my relatives, many of whom are entitled or just jerks in general. So, let me know if you want more. Thanks for reading. Entitled mom gets mad when I don't write her daughter's essay for her. So, I'm on mobile, and this is my first post, so sorry for the bad formatting in advance. Usually a lurker, but felt like I should tell my story. It's not too dramatic or crazy, but it's my own mother. Sorry for the grammatical errors. Roast me if you'd like. Our cast. We've got me. We've got Entitled Mom, my own actual Entitled Mother, and my sister. Anyway, I'll try to keep things short. And yes, this is about my mother, who has been a nightmare for years. I'm an adult and in college hundreds of miles away, but she still tries to track my location, demands to know where I'm at all the time, and pretty much tries to control every aspect of my life. Background. I'm home for the summer and don't have much to do. My sister missed an important event for her physical education class 
and had to write an essay to make up for it. She plays volleyball and had a two-day tournament the same weekend as her finals. When they got home from the tournament, my sister said I needed to write her essay for her. My mom was listening. I thought she was joking, but alas, the story. Later that night, I'm sitting in the kitchen, watching Netflix and eating blueberries. My mother enters, holding a piece of paper. So, here's the prompt. Write the essay. What? No. You have to write the essay for your sister. No, that's cheating. I told you this when we got home from the tournament. I thought you were joking. I'm not going to help her cheat. It's just a stupid paper. She only has to do this because she missed the P.E. event and has to make up for it. It's not even hard. Well, tell her to do it herself, and I can edit it. She has the finals to study for. Just do it. No, she can do it herself. Entitled Mom starts yelling. She doesn't have time. Just do it. Now, I have a pretty bad temper myself, but I did my best to stay reasonable. She can write it, and I can edit it. My mom stomps off, angrily, and complains to my dad. She comes back into the room and glares at me. I'm right, and you're wrong in this situation, and you know it. She doesn't say anything and leaves. I'm pretty upset at this point, and grab my stuff and walk upstairs. I stop outside my sister's door. How long does the essay have to be? Two pages. Just write as much as you can, like a page and a half, and I can edit it and give you ideas on how to make it longer. Whatever. I can't believe you're not even helping me. I didn't say anything and just walked away, because I'm annoyed and upset at them for refusing to see that they're being unreasonable. A couple days later, my mom and I are in the car. You can't just live your life always following what's right and wrong. You need to be flexible. It's not about that. It's that cheating is always wrong, and if sister is caught, it's plagiarism. She could get in serious trouble, fail the class, and even get suspended. My mother talks more about her side, and about how the paper wasn't even important, and how I should help my family out when they are in need, blah blah blah. Cheating is still wrong. I helped her edit it. It took her like an hour to finish it. It's not a big deal. Besides, if she has to write an essay when she has finals in the future, this is good practice for her. Well, you sometimes go over 65 on the freeway. That's not following the law exactly. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about, and it's more important to be safe on the freeway than religiously follow the limit. It's not safe to be driving too slow. My mom talks more about how she's not saying I'm wrong, but need to be more flexible, which is bull because she's not flexible at all. And you shouldn't have said the things you said to me or your sister using the tone you did. She always talks about my tone. Sister said to me that you wouldn't help her at all. I did help her. I offered to edit it and even gave her pointers on how to make it longer. And the only reason I said the things I did the way I did is because I never expected you or sister to ever ask something like that of me. My mother was silent afterwards. She never apologized, and never apologizes when she's wrong, but always expects me to, even if I'm right. Edit. My sister actually writes the essay that first night, it took her like an hour, and I helped her edit it and get it up to the page requirement. Edit 2. My sister also is injured and didn't play, so she had the entire weekend to write the essay. Next we've got Entitled Mom harasses us at the zoo, but gets a little revenge at the end. We meet again, Mr. Reddit. I have another Entitled Parent story for you, and it finally came to me after driving more into my troubled life. Sorry for how I wrote this, since I'm on my whittled phone. It's not an r slash petty revenge, but she does get it at the end. Not for me, sadly. It was a few years ago, probably around 2016, that I went to the zoo in my town, classified. I was with my friend and her boyfriend since I rarely go out. I'm not a sociable person at all, but she was an old friend and I loved hanging out with her. Her boyfriend was also fun to talk to and even sarcastic at times to make us laugh. 
The things to remember. I have autism, and she might have it too, but didn't get a chance to be tested back in her day. We hate confrontation, but I'm getting a little better on how to stand up nowadays. She still needs a little work, but she's still able to keep on her toes. She is a very sweet girl and quickly apologizes over little things. I love my bestie and would do anything for her. Let's get the names first. OP, the ugliest pony in the world. We've got my best girlfriend I've ever had. We've got her cool boyfriend. We've got entitled mom, most hated of all species of humankind. And her poor kid, who needs a better mom. So, we decided to go to the zoo and we wanted to check out some animals that had been transferred from one zoo to ours. I loved seeing the tigers since I'm a big cat lover. She loved seeing the lizards and snakes, which I watched from the other side of the room. I hate snakes. It wasn't packed, so there were like 20 people in the zoo. We were at the monkeys area when the fight started. We went to see them, and Cool Boyfriend mentioned a few things about monkeys that he found online. My best friend watched one of the monkeys, a lemur, jumping around playfully while listening to him. I for one didn't really care. I didn't say anything mean about it, but in truth, I hate monkeys. All kinds. Well, I do think lemurs are cute, I guess. I grew up with a show that was about two nature brothers and a talking lemur who talked about animals in each episode. Oh, you're talking about Zaboomafoom. I remember that. Nice. So I guess I liked them from that show. But really, I don't like monkeys or apes. I tell people that from time to time and they either play it off as nothing or even act shocked. One person even tried showing me a video about how I should love them. It didn't work. So, back to the story. We went on till we got to the gorilla habitat and watched a black gorilla stroll around doing whatever it wants to do. Boring. We didn't know that Entitled Mom and Poor Kid were in the room since we were too preoccupied watching the animal. At the time, Cool Boyfriend left to go to the bathroom leaving us alone. We decided to wait for him before moving on and sat at one of the benches they had in the room. Aren't they so cool? I always wondered if we really evolved from them. I kinda hope not. If so, I'm glad we know not to throw poop at people. But I think other people would do that anyways. She laughs. Oh yeah, I forgot you don't like them. I'm really sorry for forgetting. How come? Entitled mom and poor kid were now closer to us and it looked like she was listening in on us. We didn't see nor care. The room was small anyways, so she would have heard us one way or another. No, no, it's okay, really. I guess I just don't like them because of how they are. M mean as it is, I think they're ugly. They throw poop. They even attack you if you don't provoke them. One lady got disfigured from an orangutan attack. Oh yeah, I heard about that on the news. But I get it, different opinions, right? Of course, it's okay if you like them. Not gonna be mean about that. But I do like some animals, like the big cats. But just a few actually. So, why are you here then? We turned our heads to the entitled mom, who, of course, had to butt in. She looked like a typical 40-year-old overprotective mom with the usual Karen hairstyle. Poor kid, who looked to be 7 or 8, was behind her, looking embarrassed and maybe worried, probably for our sake. We looked at her confused. Excuse me? I heard you say you hate monkeys and some animals. Why are you here then, if you hate animals? What are you going on about? I don't hate all animals. I like some. So what? Then you shouldn't be here if you hate animals. My son is here to learn about them, because he likes animals. Not to be annoyed by you two. My friend tugged on my sleeve nervously. She and I were getting nervous easily. She wanted to leave but I wanted to know why this jerk just suddenly bumped into the conversation when she should know not to stick her plastic nose in other people's business. What's it to you? So what if I don't like some animals? We don't need to love every animal known to exist. Oh, OP, come on. Let's just leave this place. Entitled mom turns to my friend and angrily shouts, Stay out of this, jerk! My friend immediately jumped and I felt her shrinking down behind me so she wouldn't get yelled at again. Okay, that did it. I got nervous easily like her, 
but when I see someone yelling or making fun of my friends like that, I go mama bear on them. I stood up seeing that she and I were almost the same height. I can't do measurements to save my life, people. I glared at her so hard that I used my same stare I gave my little sister, which, funny enough, gave her nightmares for a couple days. Don't you ever call her that. You should have stayed out of our talk in the first place. I'll take the abuse, but don't even think about harassing my friend. Poor kid tugs on her purse strap trying to pull her away from us. Mom, let's go. Don't do this again. Entitled mom ignored him and poked a bony dry finger at me almost a few inches to my nose. I wanted to just bite and rip her finger right off at that moment. Don't you dare talk to me that way, you brat. You should respect your elders. Funny, I don't see an elder. I only see a spoiled, immature three-year-old. Both my friend and poor kid chuckled at that part. I had to hold myself from laughing too. It's rare of me to think of a good comeback sometimes. Entitled mom's face almost looked like steam was ready to burst out of her ears. Of course, she shrieked at us. <coughs> poor kid was like, Mom, stop. That's it. She tried to smack me, but I quickly moved out of the way, making my friend get up and pull me further away from her. At that moment, cool boyfriend came into the small room after his bathroom break and saw what was going on. His friend glaring at the she-beast and his girlfriend almost in tears from the fight and being shouted at. Entitled mom saw him, then had the smuggest grin on her face at me. Guess she didn't see he was in our small group before and thought he was a good person to lie and get him on her side. He does look like he could work there and even had the same zoo shirt he got from the gift shop a year back. Entitled mom turns to cool boyfriend and starts pointing fingers at me shrieking in a fake whiny voice. Thank God you're here. These two little brats were harassing me and my son and tried to steal from me. Get them out of here and ban them from the zoo. Wow, good acting there. Cool boyfriend turned to us first, then to Saggy McCrybaby before turning to us again. Got yourself into trouble, huh girls? Looks like I'ma take you away so you'll be properly punished. Without entitled mom noticing, he winked at us, showing that he knew how deranged this lady was and how easily we get into trouble sometimes. We decided to play along. But we did nothing wrong. She started harassing us first. My friend says, We don't want to get kicked out. We really didn't do anything bad. Cool boyfriend motioned us to come with him, and we went with him acting sad along the way. All the while, entitled mom kept the smug grin on her face. Apparently, she was too stupid to not know what a real performance was. I turned around to see her waving her hand in a sarcastic way, while poor kid watched sadly. I guess he couldn't say she was lying to cool boyfriend, possibly too scared of her to even jump in again. I felt really bad for him. We left that area and he and I started laughing our heads off. Cool boyfriend was very clever on what to do in these situations, so we knew what his plan was at that moment. We comforted my best friend, who was still a little freaked out from that, and took her to get some drinks from the cafe. We decided not to tell a real employee since it was over and done with. The zoo was small, but we would be able to stay away from her if necessary. Honestly, I wanted to smack that grin off her face. But we were walking out of the zoo a couple of hours later. But before I left with my best friend and cool boyfriend, I saw entitled mom with poor kid in the gift shop with a security guy next to her and store cashier behind her. The security guy had her purse in one hand and holding a small toy in the other hand. She must have tried to sneak out with it, but was easily caught. The gift shop had large windows around the building, and there were stacks of toys and stuff along the glass, so it was still easy to look inside. At that moment, we were both able to make eye contact. I gave her my sweetest satisfied smile and made the same hand wave she gave us back to her before switching to flip her off, then walking out of the zoo laughing to myself. I'll never forget the look of the she-beast, all red and furious with literal steam coming out of her ears like I thought. I even saw poor kids snickering behind his mother at my motions. 
I hope he's doing a lot better now. Mr. Reddit, if you want to, please use this in your video. I love your videos still, and my friend literally shrieked in excitement when I showed her the video. You and everyone in the comments really made her day. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. You rock. And our final story of the day. No, your kid cannot sit on my motorcycle. Plus, you owe me a new helmet. Hello, everyone. First story here. Been binge-watching entitled parents' stories on YouTube and decided to add one of my own. Keep up the great stories, Mr. Reddit. Typing this one up on my phone, so usual disclaimers. English is native language, etc. On to the story. Cast. We've got entitled parent. We've got entitled kid. We've got my writing buddy and me, obviously. In 2009, I used to ride with a group of fellow sports bike owners and we attended a rally held here each year. The incident itself was brief but had some serious aftermath as Entitled Kid got injured badly from nearly 600 pounds of motorcycle falling on him. The incident itself. I am chatting with friends about the poker run we just completed with several hundred other riders and I hear something bouncing across the pavement near my bike. I look over and see my helmet sent flying like a football by Entitled Kid, knocking it off of the bike and kicking it. I picked up the helmet, then go over to talk to the kid about touching people's property and end up running into Entitled Parent instead. Incoming Karen. Hey, Entitled Kid, you shouldn't touch the bikes without anyone's permission. What are you saying to my child? I was just saying that she- My kid wanted to sit on this motorcycle. You are going to let him. No, your kid cannot sit on my motorcycle. Plus, you owe me a new helmet. What? Why? I point at the now scuffed helmet in my hand. Because your kid knocked it down and kicked it across the pavement. So, how much was it? $350. What? That's ridiculous! Just as she was saying this, we hear a crash followed by a second, along with some yelling and crying. While we were arguing, Entitled Kid had in fact climbed up onto my bike and knocked it off of its stand, which caused it to fall over into the bike next to it. In the process, the kid broke his leg from the bike either landing on it or crushing it between it and the bike it fell against. So now my friend gets involved, as it was his bike that was knocked over as well. My friend and entitled parents start arguing as myself and the other riders work on getting the bikes off of the kid. My friend. Yo, lady, your kid just wrecked two bikes. You're gonna pay for that too. No, I am not. You shouldn't have had them parked that close together. Your kids shouldn't have been touching them at all. In fact, you shouldn't even be on this side of the line. At this point, my friend is pointing to the line on the pavement where the bikes were parked near for the show and shine portion of the event. It is also at this point security and RCMP arrive. Entitled Parent ends up getting arrested for disturbing the event and Entitled Kid ended up in the ER for injuries from the falling bikes. Aftermath Entitled Parent tried to sue the event organizers for what happened. Event organizers countersued for disturbance and to cover the damages to the bikes. Entitled Parent lost and ended up shelling out well over $3,000 between replacing my helmet and parts and repairs on the bikes. Entitled Mom wants the headphones I'm wearing for her adorable child. A little backstory. This happened about four years ago in the terminal of an airport. I was waiting for my flight from Moscow to London. I own an over-the-head pair of headphones called Blue Ant. It's a small company in the US, and they do have pretty good quality for the price. I think I was listening to a song from Fall Out Boy. Don't judge me. It was 2015, and it's important to the story. Now for the story. I'm just sitting there in the very uncomfortable seats waiting to board. It's about 45 minutes till we start boarding, so about 50 minutes until coach can board. I had just switched songs to Fall Out Boy and I feel a tap on the back of my shoulder. I turn around to see who it was. I thought it was a friend, so that's why I turned around. It was the kid. He isn't bad in this story and he was around 6 or 7. And he says this. 
What are you listening to? It's Fall Out Boy. They are a really good band, and I would recommend them. I smiled really awkwardly. Can I please listen? It might be hard because they won't fit on you. It's okay. I can hold it. My heart just sank because he didn't throw any tantrum. He just thought of a way to do it. Okay, but I'm only going to play a little bit of the song because this one has a few no-no words. It's okay. Mommy and Daddy say no-no words to each other all the time. What a household. I put the headphones on him, turn on the music, and lowered the volume so I don't hurt his ears. Once the music starts playing, he gets a smile from ear to ear. I actually get a small tear in my right eye. I can't cry out of left. Once the music ends and I take off the headphones from his head, he says this. Thank you for letting me listen to your music. He gives me a big hug that barely wrapped around my arms. You asked nicely, and good things happen when you ask nicely. I was trying not to cry. He lets go and runs off to where I assume his parents are. Why would you leave a child unintended, especially in an airport? They definitely get the best parent award. Here's where things get interesting. About 15 minutes after the first encounter with the kid, Entitled Mom has a strong grip on the child. He was visibly in pain and was making sounds trying to get out of it. They both walk up to me and the Entitled Mom grabs my attention by her snapping at me right in front of my face. It's exactly like when someone is asking for the waiter or waitress because they aren't being served fast enough. It gets my attention and I take off my headphones and tell her this. Is there something you need for me? This kid must have told his mother where he was. Can I get those headphones? No, but you can let go of your kid. It looks like you're hurting him. Entitled mom raises her voice to sound demanding. I will do no such thing. Give me those headphones. No, they are mine and I paid for them with my own money. Therefore, it's my property and I can do whatever I want with it. This seemed to really upset her. Give me those headphones or my son won't be happy. I bet your son will be even more happy if you just let him go. This seemed to upset her even more. I deserve those headphones and you don't because I'm a parent. This entire subreddit in a nutshell. I was confused because I couldn't even logic out her logic in this situation and I respond with this. This was a mistake. In my demanding voice, which was significantly deeper and more aggressive than hers. No, and that's final. I will not give up or even sell them to you, or matter of fact, to anyone else. She then does the stereotypical lunge forward and tries to grab them off my head. So what I did was dodge out of the way. She ends up breaking her nose on the seat, or what it looks like because of the way she threw herself at it. I tried not to laugh at her own stupidity. After she gets up, she yells this. This man punched me and broke my nose. I just face palmed with a shake in my head at how stupid she sounded. I responded with this while my head in my hands. I didn't do that because there are cameras all around this place as well as a large number of people that will be on my side. So I would just walk away and forget this ever happened. She storms off and gives everyone the finger, and while she's doing this, she yells these words. Forget you! I guess a takeaway is that if you ask nicely, you might actually get what you asked for. Thanks for reading, and have a great day or night, depending on where you live and when you read it. Next we've got, Entitled Mother Takes My Babysitting Money. Hi Mr. Reddit, and all. So I wanted to post this story about my entitled mother encounter. Sadly, it is about my own mother, which sort of sucks. So, growing up, my mother was not the best mother. She did many, many things, most of which ended with CPS involvement until the final straw. This story is not the final straw, but did happen a couple months before it. I was around 15 at this time, and it was summer. Our cast... We've got Entitled Mom, we've got My Younger Sister, Snowy Bloom, The Fool, aka me, and Stacy, 
my, at the time, best friend. In the summer after finishing ninth grade, I wanted to make some money, but most places in my city did not hire 15 and a half year olds as it made for a lot of liability paperwork they had to fill out. So getting a job in the mall or Walmart wasn't something I could do. So I decided to search Craigslist for a babysitting job after getting my CPR certification and a couple of other things. I got hired by this wonderful couple and made around $200 a week, but my paycheck was every two weeks. So when I was paid, I had $400 in my pocket. When I got my job, my mother told me she wanted me to hand my full paychecks over to her so as to save them for back-to-school shopping in August. In my state, we went back to school around the 4th or so of September. It's okay, Snowy Bloom. We can use it at Torrid or Lane Bryant. After you get your last paycheck in August, we can finally get you some clothes that fit properly. Lane Bryant and Torrid are plus-sized stores. Even back then, eight years ago, I was plus-sized and didn't have cute clothes that fit me. So this really excited me, and I agreed and began giving her $400 every two weeks for a month and a half. She never saw my final paycheck. Two weeks into August, my mother randomly left our home. She never told us when she was doing this, but this happened often, so by now I was used to it. However, she also happened to not stock the fridge before leaving. So I, used to having to take care of my younger sister by now, decided I would use 100 of my now saved 1200 to buy sister and I some groceries so I could make us dinner and make her breakfast before I went to work. She knew how to make PBJs and I trusted her to stay home alone. I wasn't allowed to bring her with me to work. I went into my mom's room and went to the dresser drawer she showed me she kept the money. I opened it, dug around her stuff, and... Not there? Huh, that was odd. I looked in the other drawers, under the mattress, and everywhere. But there was no 1200 anywhere I looked. Finally, I decided to text my mother. Hey mom, where's my babysitting money? I need to use some of it to buy some groceries since you didn't leave anything really in the fridge. Oh, hi, Snowy Bloom. I took your money with me to Florida. Florida? So, so that's where she went. Okay, but we have no food in the house. Just ask Stacy if her mom could spare some food. Side note, Stacy's mom didn't like me much because I used her home to escape from my entitled mother a lot. But she lived only three streets away so I figured there was no other choice. Okay, I'll ask. When will you be back? Next week, gotta go. Okay. So, my entitled mom wasn't coming back for a week, so I needed to ask Stacy for at least enough to last us until the next day or so. I would be getting my final paycheck that Friday, so I could get us food. Stacy told me her mom didn't appreciate being asked but gave us a couple days worth of bread, milk, and peanut butter and jelly. We ate only PB&Js for the next couple of days, and I got my paycheck and used it to buy some food. Unfortunately, a part of me felt like I would never see that $1,200 again, so I used it to buy us a pizza and then some groceries, and I asked Stacy to hold the rest so my entitled mom wouldn't find it when she asked for it and searched through my stuff for it. I was right. My entitled mom came back a day later than she said, with a new suitcase as well as her old one. She had brought us some souvenirs from Disney World, which was apparently where she had gone with her friend. Sure, go to Disney World and don't bring your two children. Go alone with your friend. That's fine. My entitled mom had gotten us one or two things we liked, but then about an hour later, I asked her where the money went. Oh, I spent it. My eyes were widened, and I was stunned into silence as I stared at her. My money? The money I earned by watching five children from 6.30 to 4.30 p.m. every weekday? For the entire summer? Gone? And then I got mad. But I couldn't say anything, as she was known to hit me if I did. So I kept my mouth shut and said okay. Then she asked the fatal question. So... Where is your last paycheck? We can still get some things from Lane Bryant. 
I spent it on food for me and my sister. You couldn't have spent more than $100. Where's the rest? I spent it on food for me and my sister. I also bought some books. To say she was mad was an understatement, and she yelled at me for an hour, took away any new books, my phone, and grounded me for a week for spending my hard-earned money instead of giving it to her. As I said, this was not the final straw that caused for the final CPS involvement that would place me and my sister in temporary foster care, and inevitably permanent care. If y'all want to hear that story, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for reading. And our final story of the day. The water is making everyone crazy. Hello Mr. Reddit and everyone. I've been a lurker of Reddit for years now and decided to make an account to share some of my stories and interests. I apologize for the formatting, on mobile, etc, etc. English is my first language. I sometimes just suck at writing. Background. I work at a boat ramp seasonally as an environmental educator and boat ramp monitor. It is a pretty relaxing job most of the time. I get to make my own schedule and bring books and games to help occupy the long hours of no boaters. There must be something in the water, however, because my ramp always attracts entitled people, Karens and Stans, the name I give to entitled dads. Before I get into telling you guys any of my experiences, you need to understand how the ramp is designed. I made a poorly drawn picture of its design here. Now on to the main event. Our cast is the following. We've got Karen, disgruntled driver. We've got me, majestic Epona woman, a young woman who just wanted to go home. Father, my awesome father who also works for the same group I work for, different departments. We've got random guy, a random guy who was parked wrong but I hadn't talked to yet, has no real bearing on this story. There is one thing about our ramp that many people agree on. Well, two actually. First, the lake is real pretty to stare at. Two, parking is atrocious. Of course, this is because it is meant for boaters and not sightseers, but we ramp monitors don't mind as long as you don't get in the way of people with trailers and you move if asked. Unfortunately, people do, in fact, park their cars in red zone of the picture I provided. This zone is meant for people backing up trailers, boats, and other large watercraft either into or out of the lake. I'm sure those who have dealt with the public know forbidden red zone areas are the people's favorite places to park. This is especially true for the ramp I work at due to the guardrails being right up against the water. The people love being there because it allows them to stare at the water while they do whatever it was they wanted to do. Eat lunch, text, talk on a phone, eat ice cream, etc. I'm sure you can see the problem. By parking there, they block parking and available space for my actual patrons to park or move their trucks and trailers around. Now, on this particular day it was late, cold, and windy. AKA, a really bad day to go fishing on the lake. There were several people parked up against the guardrails, but as I've said before, we ramp monitors don't mind as long as you move when asked. It was a woman in a car with her daughter, our soon-to-be Karen, a random dude in a truck, and these two youngish ladies, about the same age as me, so 25 to 30. All were enjoying the crashing of the water and the sounds it made. About an hour into my shift, my father called me and said he was heading to the headquarters and asked me what I'd like for a coffee from our local chain coffee shop. Being a caffeine addict, I instantly agree and hung up waiting for him to arrive. When he does pull in, he arrives with a trailer. There was a problem. He couldn't find a place to park being blocked in. However, being an older intimidating man, he was able to convince the woman to move so he can park in a proper parking space. She does with a sour look on her face, but once he is parked, she moves right back to where she was which it turned out to be the space blocking the whole ramp. About 10 minutes later, a young woman, who parked properly, might I add, walked over to me and asked if I could help her with the woman parking in the no parking zone. Apparently, she tried to ask her to move and was yelled at. 
Being as this was part of my job, keeping open and steady flow of the parking lot, I agreed right away and walked over. Now, this woman was not 100% Karen. If I had to give her a percentage, I'd say 60%. Her hair and skin were obviously fake, fake blonde and a fake tan, in her late 40s, maybe early 50s. This is how the conversation went, best to my memory. I wave at her. Hello, ma'am. What? She gives me a side glare. I'm sorry to inform you, ma'am, that you are in a no parking zone. Karen makes a disgusted sound between a huff and a grunt. I don't see where it says no parking. That man, referring to my father, tried to say the same thing, and I've told him that I've been parking here for many years, and it has never caused any problems. I point out signs and paint on ground clearly stating no parking. Ma'am, I understand. However, there is a woman who wishes to leave the boat ramp and she has no way of leaving. Could you please back up into the space behind you? She attempted to interrupt me several times throughout this speech that I have memorized. Karen is getting visibly irritated. Why haven't you asked random guy to move? Me, mentally sighing because she deflected. They always deflect. Ma'am, I will be talking to him. However, right now I'm talking to you, and I request that you please move. Karen attempts to deflect once more. What about the man behind me? Refuting to my father's trailer. He's not in a parking spot. There are no parking spots behind me. I'm laughing so hard in my mind right now at the sheer blindness of this woman. How she got her license, I have no clue. Ma'am, the spot the gentleman with the trailer is in is a trailer parking spot. There are clearly marked lines on the ground marking that he is in a parking space. Repeat this discussion two to three times. Eventually, the woman got frustrated enough that she just left. The young ladies that were trying to get out thanked me. Turns out, while I was trying to have a decent conversation with Karen, she was able to get random guy to move. He apparently was nicer about it. Kind of anticlimactic ending, but hey... Not all stories end with police or threats of suing a person. If you guys are interested, I'll happily share other stories of weird or entitled people. Perhaps I'll tell you the epic saga of Mr. Pooh next. Bonus story! Entitled Dad wants his order now. Our cast. We've got the nice lady, the nice co-worker, the nice manager, and Entitled Dad. And me. Well, of course me. Sorry for any mistakes, not very good at spelling. I work at a famous fast food restaurant, and this happened last week on a Friday. So I had just clocked in for my shift and started to take orders when this nice lady came up to my till and proceeded to order. I would like five hamburger combos with cheese and diet colas, a large salad, and a baked potato. Okay, that will be $65.75. The nice lady took her receipt and waited for her number to be called. Enter Entitled Dad. He walks up to my till and from the look on his face, I already know crap is about to hit the fan. This is crazy. I've been waiting almost 15 minutes for someone to take my order. I am sorry, sir. We are busier than usual. May I take your order? I'll have two chocolate ice creams in a cup and a bacon cheeseburger. Okay, that will be $4.95. I say and hand him his receipt. He walks over and stands by nice lady and proceeds to complain about the wait. I take the next order and it's a bunch of 6 to 10 year olds just there for our $1 small ice creams. They order 6 of them and I proceed to grab them after helping manager bag nice lady's order. And manager went to help in the drive through and I grabbed the ice cream and handed it to the kids. Apparently, this was the wrong thing to do, because Entitled Dad starts screaming at me. Where the heck is my bacon cheeseburger and ice creams? At this point, he had been waiting seven minutes, which I can understand is a lot. Manager, hearing the yelling, comes and stands behind me, but doesn't say anything. I'm sorry, sir. We're still waiting on your burger, and I didn't want your ice cream to melt before your burger was ready. Manager turned and asked coworker what was taking so long. She replied, we were waiting on the patties to cook and it would be ready in about 30 seconds. 
Okay, just make it as fast as you can. Why are you blaming my daughter for your slowness and stupid employees? Yup, that's right. Entitled Dad was nice co-worker's dad, and she was getting more embarrassed by the moment. By this time, Manager had his order ready, and he had only waited about eight, maybe nine minutes. Here's your order, sir. I want my money back, and my order free, and this girl written up for serving those kids before me, or I will be talking to Carol. Not real name. Your store manager about the both of you. Me, standing there, not saying anything from the complete and utter shock of it all, just smiled as manager told me to go clean trays, which I knew was code for, I got this, as I could see manager was getting mad. Go ahead and have a nice chat with her. She will tell you the same thing I am. You're not getting a free meal, and I don't care who you know. That doesn't give you the right to be an entitled piece of crap and yell at an employee who is only doing her job and is one of the nicest young ladies here. Now, if you don't leave, I will talk to Lindsay, the owner, and will have you banned from this store. Do I make myself clear? Note, manager is a six foot four guy and built like the Hulk. With that, Entitled Dad walked out, slamming the door, and Nice Coworker apologized and said that he tries that all the time at our store because Nice Coworker is Carol's niece and Entitled Dad's her brother and that makes him think he is some big cheese that can get whatever he wants. We all went on with our day and lucky I only had an hour and a half left of my shift. Hope it wasn't too boring, but this was my first encounter with an Entitled Dad and I thought you might like it. Feel free to post it and share it on YouTube. And shout outs to our re generals of the day Laura, Randy, and Anne Swan. Become tomorrow's re generals by leaving as many re's as you can in the comments below and watch this video that just popped up next. You'll love it.